Hi, welcome back to Ignite Success, where we bring on all kinds of interesting and fun people to <laughs> share what they do in life, their journey, their career to motivate and, and ignite your success. I'm Sherry Clark and I'm your host and today I've got three really fun guests on this on this program and my first guest is Ashley Doty with Hi. a really cool name uncomplicated. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And we're going to get into that because it's about education. It sure is. There you go. Yes. Thank you so much, Ashley, for being here. Thank you. And Jenny Johnson, yes, who is with Maritime Inclusion Partners, which Maritime is water. Oh, all things water. Yeah. 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 All things yeah. water. Want to make sure. And we have Troy Pe Pepito with Genuine Spirit Company. Correct. Yes. And you brought some um, of sure. your uh, your stuff with you. Correct, yeah. Products. Yeah, yeah. So thank you all for being here. I appreciate it. So what I want to do is I'm going to start first with you, Ashley, and I want to ask you about Uncomplicate Ed. What is it and why are you, did you do it? Sure. So as the name would suggest, it's all about uncomplicating education, which is a big ask <laughs> uh, for sure, um, but uh, as a former teacher, educator, uh, also was a principal here in um, in Florida, um, I just saw a lot of unnecessary complications. Right. Yeah. So because education is already as complicated as it is, and there's already it's just a tough job. What can we do to try to remove some of those barriers and simplify it, knowing that simple isn't always easy, right? But how can we um, really take it down to just what is the highest leverage things that we can do, whether that's in our classrooms as teachers with our students or as building leaders. Uh, again, I was a former, I'm a former principal. Oh, so wow. how can we remove some of these barriers from our teachers so they can do what they came here to do, what they love to do and teach their kids so that their kids can learn. So that's what we are. We help to uncomplicate education and complicate ed. Oh, kind of like taking the the handcuffs off, right? Yeah. Let them go for it. Exactly. Yeah. And, exactly. And run with their passion. I love that. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank well, you. I, that's wonderful. And you're so young. It's like you, you know, <laughs> like you have all this experience. It's like, wow. Well, well thanks. Kudos to you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And Jenny. Yes. All things water. All things water. Talk to us about Maritime Inclusion Partners. Yes. So Maritime Inclusion Partners is a new new startup. I just launched in January 2023. I have 25 years-ish in the maritime industry, including eight years at sea at myself as a mariner. Wow. And my time at sea was amazing, and I got to see the world and do incredible things. Um, but I definitely experienced a lot of gender-based violence, harassment, and discrimination being in such a male-dominated industry. And so what I've decided to do is go out on my own with Maritime Inclusion Partners, to work with maritime companies, maritime schools, maritime unions, nonprofits, to help them basically do a cultural transformation through the maritime industry so it is more welcoming and inclusive to women, people of color, LGBTQ, so that the maritime industry can remain sustainable. What a lot of people don't think about on a day-to-day -day basis is where we get our stuff. And so much of what we get comes from ships from all over the world. And the U.S. Uh, flagged fleet is shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. And that really proposes a national security issue at the end of the day. So the fact that we are missing, mm -hmm. don't have enough mariners to keep these vessels crewed so that we can keep our cargo moving, keep our shipyards full of people, keep people employed, bringing that money into the United States, we're kind of allowing it to shrink because we're not making it open and inclusive to all people. I kind of like to joke that it, the industry stuck in 1955. There, there's all of the social justice movements that we all experience on land don't translate out to sea. And that is why these barriers have been put in place, these obstacles for different de demographics of people to come out and be a mariner and have an incredible career and see the world and make good money and may make sure our commerce keeps moving. And so that's my goal is to essentially transform the culture of the maritime industry. You know, that's really interesting too. I mean, who would have thought, right? And, and here comes somebody, you see a problem. My mom used to say, you find a need and, and, and fill it. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. You know, find the void and fill it. And you're doing it. And, you know, who would have thought? Like, people... I don't know, that's really cool. That's really Thank interesting. You. So I wish you all the best Thank in you. that. And, Troy, talk yes. to us about your Genuine Spirit Company. Uh, so Genuine Spirit Company evolved from my past. I uh, also went to sea. So I did 20 years active duty, uh, U.S. Navy, retired as a chief petty officer. Um, when I was transitioning out of service, I was a home brewer. I figured out what am I going to do? Thought about opening up a brewery, kind of went down these paths and just started actually importing using the ships. I learned a lot about the whole maritime stuff with that on the civilian side. Uh, and then just kind of got into the wine and importing and then it evolved into me growing into bourbon. So I went from beer to wine to bourbon. So now this is my final resting place. I created Genuine Spirit Company name based after the chief petty officer. So once you get selected, you're considered a genuine chief. Mm -hmm. So that's where that name comes from. And the brand that Genuine owns is April 1 Bourbon. And April 1 is the date of the establishment of the chief petty officer, 130 years ago, so 1893. Yes, and you were explaining your label and what it meant. Yeah, so I had a symbol of the Navy. You can see they called the chief petty officer goats, and then you can see in Annapolis they have the ram. And so that I use that symbol, that figure, to kind of tell the story. And then it's like, how can I add on to that story? So I put them in a uniform. Mm -hmm. So as we were creating the label, it was kind of like, how do we tell that with just a picture? You know, a picture is worth a thousand words. So we were trying to establish that, and this is what we came up with. A lot of strategy into that label. A lot of it, yeah. I talked about the gold with colors yeah. and you know, like what yeah. represents everything. You go from everything to mm -hmm. the corks to the, yeah, it's, it's crazy how much effort you can go into just producing one bottle. I know, and people see it and they think, you know, it just came out, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, there's a, there's a lot of work. There's actually a lot of bourbon drinking involved <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> in creating sure. it. Sure. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, and, and you know, we were we were joking around at the beginning, but, uh, you know, the hat's pretty cool, too. Love it. Thank the color you. is, what was the color again? Uh, mint, but uh, everybody calls it Tiffany Blue, so I don't know if that's a trademark thing. We're not allowed to use it, but. But uh, I thought it was very Florida. Yeah, yeah, it's a great color. So, it's a great color. So, you know, you got everybody's like this entrepreneur here, and I love it because I'm an entrepreneur too. So, I love entrepreneurship. So, I'm going to ask each one of you, and I'm going to start first with you, Ashley. Mm -hmm. How do you define success? Whew. Um, I've always, you know, it's, it comes back to that question I feel like we always think about when people go into interviews like, where do you see yourself in five years? Um, I have always said happy um, because I, I believe in going where our paths lead us. Having a goal, sure, I want to make a difference. It's part of my values. I want to make a difference. I want to be authentic. I want to live life on purpose. Um, so as long as I am doing that, to me, that's success. And um, I talk about in my former in my former life, I was an actress. So my my first degree when I left college was in theater. And at that point, success was well, what is success when you're 18 years old? Like I'm gonna go on Broadway or I'm or whatever. To me, it was can I make a living doing what I love? And once I kind of checked that off, now it wasn't a great living. I'll be honest. It, <laughs> it was regional theater, right? And but I was doing it but I was happy, I was up being authentic, I was making a difference. So to me, that's what success is, and how that kind of translates into what I'm doing now. In working with educators and leaders across the state in education, how can we live out our collective purpose of helping students reach their max potential? There you go, there you go. Yeah. Good answer. Thank you. What about you? I think that being excited to do what you do every day when you wake up, mm -hmm. to me, that's success. Also being able to pay the bills. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, that has to happen. We want to mm -hmm. eat, we mm -hmm. want to have a roof over our head, maybe a couple extra bucks to go away for a weekend, you know. But like for me, I've always been the kind of person, I don't need a whole heck of a lot. I want to uh, have peace of mind and be happy. And um, and be be in a space where creativity is constant. So you you're in that space where you're always kind of reinventing the direction you're going, and you can see things in a new light. If you've created your space, your career, to where that's happening to you on a regular basis, to me that's that's success. There you go. I agree. <laughs> I agree. Troy. Man, success to me, cause. 
it's like all in the eye of the beholder. It depends on everybody has different things. And to me, I set a goal. And if I can hit that goal, I'm successful in what that mission was or whatever it was I was setting. Whether it's sports, whether it's creating a, ba uh, a bourbon label, it's just, again, and it falls into the same categories that you all just mentioned about, you know, being happy and, you know, things. But for me, I, was like, I really want to hit my goals. I come up with a plan. I, uh, I call, I say, I tell people, plan, prep, execute. Mm -hmm. And if you can do the planning, you prep for it, and then you execute, you're pretty much going to be successful in my eyes. There you go. Great answer. I love it all. Love it all. Thank you three for coming. It goes fast, right? Like yeah. so fast. <laughs> yes. So that's it for this segment of Ignite Success. If you want to learn more about Ashley Doty, if you want to learn more about Jenny Johnson and Troy Pepito, you can go to IWantABuzz.com. Thank you. I'll catch you on the next time. With Storehouse Media Group, we are an award-winning publisher and we are everything books. We take an author who wants to write a book, whether it's with a concept and we help flush it out and develop it, or we will write the book for them, or we edit the book, or we publish the book, and we can market it to bestseller. All of the above, we just everything books. That's what Storehouse Media Group is.